and this lady came up to me. I had just got done singing, and she said, oh, I know T-Pain. Um, I like to show him, you know, a video of you singing or, you know, performing or something like that. And I was like, okay, cool. She came back a couple minutes later and she was like, actually, I'm gonna get him on the phone. Hey, pretty baby with the high heels on. You give me fever like I've never, ever known. It's actually kind of crazy how this happened. Um, I was at a karaoke spot one night and this lady came up to me. I had just got done singing and she said, oh, I know T-Pain. Um, I like to show him, you know, a video of you singing or, you know, performing or something like that. And I was like, okay, cool. She came back a couple minutes later and she was like, actually, I'm gonna get him on the phone. So she called him and um, he heard me, said that he, you know, the video quality wasn't all that good. So I was like, well, let me go outside. I'll do something, you know, I'll do something else. Just do it acapella. Stepped outside, you know, just took the video, never heard anything back from it. And two years later, it was a, Sunday, technically morning, 1.30 in the morning, and I was just like, eh, I ain't posted on TikTok before. You know, post of any type, no no pictures, no videos, no nothing. So I was just like, let's see what happens. I was set a goal, 2,500 likes, a couple thousand followers, I'm happy. About, give or take, 5.30 the next day, I was just over that goal, and I was like, okay, cool. You know, did what I did. Then about 7.30 that night, my phone started doing a backflip and it didn't stop. Every time you refresh, it jumped by thousands. It was about 10.30, and I rolled over, checked my phone, and I had, you know, DM from Dana, but it was just because he reposted the video. So when it tagged me, you know, I immediately saw it, and I was just like, okay, cool. And I sent him a message back. I was like, you know, thanks for, you know, sharing it. He sent me a voice message, not even five minutes later. And uh, just from that point on, I started talking back to him, and he was like, well, where do you live? I told him where I live. 15 minutes later, my phone rang and all it said was UFC for the caller ID. Pick up the phone. Hi, this is Lene. I'm Dana's personal assistant. How you doing this morning? I said, confused. And um, she was like, well, you know, boss man had me call. He wants to know if you want to come out to Dallas for UFC 277. We can get you on a flight either tonight or tomorrow morning. You know, it's up to you. Let me know how many people you got coming and we'll take care of you. And I was just like, oh, okay. So. We get out there, we actually flew out that night. The next morning, kind of just relaxed, and at about, I think it was 3.30, show started at seven, but he wanted me to come in early, he wanted me to sing in the octagon. So we got there early, I met Dana, we talked for about 15, 20 minutes, and then he had to, you know, go get ready to do stuff, and you know, I was watching him run around everywhere, different fighters, and when Mike showed up, it was weird because like, I didn't know who they were talking about. So I'm like, okay, you know, fighter. Everybody's like, oh, Mike's here, Mike's in the hallway, Mike, Mike, Mike. Well, the last person that said something said, Mike Tyson's here. I said, who? And when I said that, him and his entourage walked past me. And I just sat on the couch and I was just like, frozen. So I walked up to him, you know, introduced myself. And he basically was like, you know, it's nice to meet you. He didn't know who I was. You know, I'm just kind of here, just one of those things. Well, about, 20 minutes later, Dana walks in, walks straight up to him, you know, talks to him. And I hear I'm just kind of, you know, chatting up. And then I hear, hey, kid, I'm the youngest guy in there, so I already knew. I turn around and I'm like, oh, God. He looks at me, he's holding his phone. That you? I'm like, yeah. Looked at his phone, looked at Dana, looked back at his phone and looked at me. Why are you still standing over there? Come here. Honestly. It's one of those things I'm still learning how to do. But starting to figure out it's pretty easy. It's just one of those things where it doesn't feel like work. So therefore, it honestly balances itself out in the sense of I just continue doing what I'm doing. Daily basis, you know, I walk around singing, doing stuff like that. So it's really no different. My most mind blowing experience was definitely the invitation I got to um, Michael Jackson's sons, well, actually the estate, but Prince Jackson invited me to the 40th anniversary thriller party at the uh, Havenhurst Estate. So that was definitely pinnacle top of the mountain, not gonna be topped. And it just, you know, was a very insane moment for me. I had the privilege, after showing up, you know, after being invited, Prince, you know, gave me a hug when I got there, said it's wonderful to meet you. You know, said, I'm, I'm so glad you came. And then he pulled a mic on me. 
turned around and looked at the stage and he looked at me, looked at the stage again. And he said, so there's no pressure, but the band's been practicing all night. If you want to get up there, the stage is yours. We'd love to have you. I'm already invited, didn't expect that. So automatically that made me feel 10 times better. Well then, you know, he introduces me to the band and I'm like, well, what songs haven't you done? You know, like, I'm not gonna be difficult. Whatever y'all have is what I'll do. Well, we got Remember the Time and we haven't done Thriller yet. So, not only did my idol son invite me, offer me a chance to perform, I got to perform, but then I got to sing the song the name of the, of the namesake of the party in front of two of his children, two of his nephews, and one of his brothers. Can't top that. So honestly, starting out, it was one of those things for me where I always enjoyed singing. It was fun, and it was a hobby, but I didn't do it in front of people. I was scared to do it in front of people. And, you know, starting to go to karaoke shows kind of opened me up a little bit to doing it more. And then when I started DJing, you know, I started building that personality and that comfort to talk to people in crowds like that. So then I started doing, you know, small gigs and singing or whatever. And from that point on, it just kind of molded and grew. Probably my biggest roadblock along this journey is having to, how do I say this? Having to meet certain people that get your hopes up about certain things when in all reality, they can't promise you anything, which it's not about the promise as much as it is. Just like, don't, don't put it here when it's actually here, you know? Because it mentally puts me in a different state of mind of I'm about to go harder and figure, you know, some things out and get different situations situated. But in all reality, you know, you weren't who or what or where you said you were. So it became kind of like a situation where it was very deflating because it happened often. But it's something that I learned to get over and get used to. And you just gotta, at some point, you know, keep pushing forward. Honestly, the speakeasy was one of those places where it was just a calm and collected atmosphere. So it, it put me at ease of being around a large group of people frenzy or calm it was just one of those things where you know that was really one of those turning points for me to be compared to michael jackson is absolutely insane hands down like i don't even know how to describe it any more than that so honestly little country town like two or three red light town type deal everybody knows each other a bunch of farmland which is you know i grew up on the farm so honestly style wise Musically, I just I always had an old soul. You know, my surroundings never really brought me to gravitate to it as much as it was just my ear and hearing it. And then as far as, you know, literal style goes, I mean, gotta work, gotta get the boots, the jeans, gotta go to work. Definitely Janet, um, Chris Stapleton, and honestly at the pinnacle of my list at this particular moment would be Weekend. I will give you the same advice that Jackie Jackson gave me. He said, don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't. Don't ever let anybody persuade you to do anything differently. And more importantly, believe in yourself and you will not be stopped. They say, why, why? Tell them that is human nature. Why, why? Does he do me that way? If they say, why, why? Tell him that is human nature. Why, why does he do me that way? I like loving this way.